Okay, here we go. We've got our Explore shirts on today. Yeah, let's go explore. And I've got mine that says Explore because we're we're sad we're not going to be able to explore. We're supposed to go to Portugal and Spain this week, but that's not happening anymore, and that's okay. Okay, Bryson was just playing with this too. Let me tell you guys, I have two little boys with loose teeth. Okay, don't put your don't you don't have to show them. It's not show up on the thing, but they have the exact same tooth loose at the exact same time. So it's now it's a big tooth. It's the big one of the big front teeth. So now we're in a competition to see who can lose their teeth first. Or I, I, bet first. It, I bet it's me. Because, you know me. because mine got, because I discovered mine was wiggly first. Yeah, like two days before. So I, I'm not sure if that's enough to mean yours is going to be first. Okay, hand on the mouth. Okay. So today we're in Portugal because we're supposed to be there. We're supposed to fly out on Saturday and get there on Sunday. I really like flying so I can watch a bunch of movies. Yeah, that is. That is a nice part about flying. And sleeping. And, well, and you guys sleep. Aw, and snuggling. You guys are good at sleeping on airplanes. I'm not as good. So it's, Why? Um, it's hard for me. Okay, don't forget to look this way. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we're going to talk about Portugal. Oh, you're looking at a car out there. Okay, cool. All righty. So, real quick, let me pull up my notes. They have gone away when I was going through everything I was going through. All right, so we are going to start with our first slide, which is four, two, oh, that's us. All right, so here we are. Make it bigger. Well, it's, make it bigger, there we oh. go. All right, so that's us. Yep, that's yep. us. Uh, Bryson, Connor, Jen and Rob. And Bryson left. And okay. Bryson just left. That's okay. So, um, he'll have to rewatch it later then, like a lot of people probably. This is our, uh, we have a Wanderlust Wednesday group on Facebook where we go through extra little activities or just information, videos, that sort of thing about the destination we've been working on. And so, um, join our group if you want additional information about Portugal in the coming weeks. In the last couple of weeks, we've also gone over Italy and Greece and Australia. You mean first Australia, then well, Greece, yeah. then Italy, then I oh, managed true. true. I did not put it in order. All right, so these are pictures of Portugal. This is what we would have been seeing if we were there right now. Um, what about pools? Well, we would have seen pools too, but... Um, the, the, the bottom of that building doesn't look really nice. I think, I think it looks... No, cool. Yeah, bottom. so they covered it in these tiles to cover up mm. the dirty areas, and so it makes everything look bright and colorful. And then they have trolleys everywhere, and then it's on the coast, and they have these pretty buildings with Is that the a pool? Spanish tile roof. No, that's not a pool. Well, um, it's just I'm, like a pool. I'm not showing pictures of pools because um, that is something that uh, we have here, too. But that little restaurant right there in the bottom corner, I really want to go there. Why? I just, that looks like my kind of place. It looks like a small, quaint, home little place with some really good, authentic food. All right. Does it have, Here's does it have now, this is down um, near Faro. This is the other area of Portugal we were going to see on the coast, which is really beautiful. Coastline. Is it like... Uh, I think it's like Baby Beach. Where's Baby Beach? That's the place we went to in Hawaii. How but does they might have something that? like there. How does she We just watched the video recently. And then they have more tiles down here. And you see the beach and the pretty white architecture. It's kind of like... Greece, the buildings in Greece, right? Mm -hmm. Except for they have a different kind of roof. Instead of the blue roof, they have tile mm -hmm. roofs. And white. Mm -hmm. All right, so Portugal is situated in the southwestern corner of Europe. So, and it, this whole area here is My called better left again. The, the Iberian Peninsula. And it is one sixth of this big area that juts out into the sea. Uh, it it only, oops, I should say it only, it only shares a border with Spain. So all around it is surrounded by Spain. It is th just 350 miles north to south and 140 miles east to west. So that is not that big of a country. But even though it's small, 
it's very varied. It's very varied. It is varied in its landscape. So up north, it's very mountainous. And down south, it is covered by low hills and plains. And that's why when you see the pictures of Lisbon, it looks really, really steep because there's, it's um, kind of in the middle, right? So what's Lisbon? Steep. Lisbon is the city we were going to start in on our trip. And the roads are kind of like that. So that's why they have those. That'd be fun. That would be fun. Our legs would be sore, though. So, because when you work. Up the hill? Yeah, when you walk up and down hills like that, then. Um, um, do you fall down? Well, you don't fall down. Um, you can, you can it, like. It just hurts your legs. Okay, so let me tell you something else really cool. What? So in the middle, like kind of up here in the north, not yeah. in the middle. So um, there were rivers that rushed down the mountains over over many, many years. And they formed these really deep gorges, which is like where there's a big, um, steep, deep area in between two mountains. And look at what it did where the rivers went down. Oh, can you see that? Yeah. So it created these really crazy mm -hmm. little rivers. Mm -hmm. What? Kayak in these rivers. Oh. Yeah. What? Did they sing? Mm -hmm. oh, this like it's about to fall off. Okay, so this area right here is ba is the most western spot in all of mainland Europe. Nope, don't you do that. This cliff right here that he's standing on rises, or this cliff right here is the same one, but it rises 460 feet out of the ocean straight up. So when you, um, when you stand at the edge of the cliff, there's nothing to see but the vast ocean. So that's why they call it the place at the end of the world. What? Because it looks all you can see is ocean on all sides because of the way the landscape is there. There's a lighthouse there too. What is it? Oh yeah, yeah I see. see the lighthouse. That's a small lighthouse. Yeah, so that's to keep people from, you know, crashing on the all the rocky shore right there. And okay, we're going to talk about the Portuguese flag now. It Portuguese, is, you said. It is green and red. You said Portuguese. Yeah, oh. Portuguese. So that's how you say, or Portuguese, I mean, <laughs> Portuguese. I'm just wondering if there's a better way to say it. That's how we Portuguese. say it. Um, so the green and the red are two colors that stand out on the flag. And they basically represent, the green represents hope, and the red represents the blood lost during battles for their independence. So what I like don't Italy. like Italy, but I don't understand why there's so much red. I would think it would be half and half. What about America? 
Well, this is an American flag. No. Nope. You learned about American flag at school. No, I don't. I didn't well, learn about it. Well, you will. All right. Well, I can tell you about it sometime, too. I can tell you about the stars and the stripes and what they represent, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, this yellow part here, well, the shield itself in the middle, it represents all the victories that Portugal has had. And the yellow part around here, it represents a shield, a navigational instrument known as an armillary sphere. Now, the Portuguese navigators used this tool to help them navigate across the oceans during the age of exploration, which was a really important time in Portugal. How? So, How? well, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it now. So, this is the age of exploration. So, that was... Um, it began in the 1400s and it lasted until the 1600s. And it was during this time that all the European nations were, were competing to try to find distant lands and lay their claim to them. So this is basically when uh, That's a silly the, explore. yeah, the explorers started uh, claiming lands in distant places. So like when America was founded, they didn't know it was here before that. Okay, so they discovered new routes to India, much of the Far East, and the Americas. Now, this building right here is called the Bellum Tower, and it was built at the site in Lisbon, which is where we were supposed to go, where Portuguese explorers set sail on their voyage, voyages. And it, at the spot of the Tagus River, King Manuel I built a series of grand monuments and a church to celebrate those successful sailors. Now, you can see that the tower is really ornate. I mean, it's like... There's really um, a lot of decorations on there. I've seen the decorations. Well, the stone carving. So all that is carved into the side. Yeah. All that was, it was just stone, and they made a lot of carvings into it. Oh. And they also added um, a lot of balconies. And detail. Some antique detail, exactly. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the Azuelo Ceramicos. So when you think of Portugal, a lot of people think of all these uh, tiles that they have all over their buildings. It's a lot like Spain, but they both are very famous for this. They're all over Portugal. Okay, so what they were used for, basically, it went back to the 13th century. A type of people called the Moors invaded the land, and they were more from, um, oh my gosh, I think more like the Arabic countries, like Morocco, and so they brought their tiles with them. But um, then it kind of got forgotten for a while. I think they were trying to say, oh, we don't want to remember when we were invaded by other people. So they stopped using them. But then King Manuel I, who's also the guy who built that building that we just saw on the other page, yep. this one, he went and visited Seville in Spain, which is another place we were supposed to visit on our trip. There are a lot of places. Yeah, how, so, uh, how expensive was it? Uh, I don't know. What? The tile? No, how expensive was it to go there? Um, I, it wasn't that bad. The flight cost. That's that's kind of the bummer of it. That we probably will never get to do like that on a flight again. But anyway, um, so then what happened is um, the king went and he saw all the tile in Spain. It was more like this kind of on the top. You see, it's kind of very old fashioned up there. Mm -hmm. So when they first brought it back to Portugal, they used all this blue and white type. But then, as the years went by, they started using um, more colors and more decorations, and then now it got to be very custom. Every building had kind of a different kind of tile, which I think is pretty cool. Um, every week we like to talk about the big national celebration. That's kind of like our 4th of July. Thank you, buddy. Um, and so they celebrate on June 10th. Uh, 10th. June! Yeah, it's your month, birthday June month. June Yeah, no, June 10th. So they celebrate. No, I'm saying that's our birthday. I know. So they celebrate National Day, and basically what that is, it's a holiday that honors Portugal's most famous author, who is Luiz de Camões, <laughs> and it's a time to celebrate all things Portuguese, including history, culture, language, and national achievements. And it's celebrated by people with Portuguese ancestry all over the world. So you don't even have to live in Portugal to celebrate. Right, so then, hey, that looks familiar, doesn't it? Yeah. That is the same money that we've seen in the last two weeks because all these countries are part of Europe, and so they all use euros. Now, things cost different amounts in each country because they have different um, rates that they get for the exchange rate on the euro, but that's a little too complex to explain right now. 
All right, so sports, just like Whoa. Italy, their favorite sport is soccer. And one of the most famous soccer players in the world is this guy. No, it looks like that guy. Well, no, it's not. It's this guy. His name is Cristiano, Cristiano How's he Ronaldo. How's he it's well, he's team. really good. Well, his team, his team was Real Madrid, and then he got traded, and then now we might get traded back. I was just reading. Okay, now another sport, which really... This, these surfers come from all over the world, uh, but this is in Portugal, and these are the biggest waves ever surfed, and it's amazing, so we'll watch a lot of this video. Whoa, can we watch your whole thing? Hopscotch, that's right. So it pretty much is. Um, I was trying to find a game that was a little more different, but I thought it was pretty appropriate because we're supposed to play hopscotch this week for your math lesson for homeschool. So we're, I'm going to play this just for a minute because what I like about it is the music they're playing in the background. Yeah. Good. It's kind of interesting because it kind of looks like banana stuff. Like banana. Mm -hmm. It looks like it looks fancy, but it doesn't look good. Kind of looks like paella to me. 
It's paella. It's a Spanish dish. My so, is something. Um, it kind of looks like the banana cookies, but with vegetables and different stuff in it. I don't see that. But so in Portugal, they eat a lot of fish because there's a lot of coastline and there's a lot of ocean surrounding it, right? Oh yeah, there's a yeah, lot of fish. So then, this meal right here is called carne de porco alentaja. It's a stew, and it combines pork and clams together, which you usually don't get go together in a dish, but here it does. So then, this right here is called caldo verde, which means green broth, and it's made with kale or collard greens, potatoes, and sausage or ham. Now, this is the national sandwich of Portugal is called a bifana, and it is a light but crusty bread roll filled with sauteed strips of pork that have been seasoned with garlic spices and white wine. I don't only like the bread. Oh, no. I think you'd like the whole thing. That's got your name written all over it. No. I think if we were in Portugal next week, we'd be eating a lot of those and the next thing, which is pastel de nada. It's a tart filled with egg custard and a pastry shell. Now, many... Oh, okay, I'm going to skip that part because I've got a good picture. All right, so then we're going to go to some Portuguese words. Hello. Oh, I was going to bring... Hola. 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 Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, goodbye is adios. Um, adios. Adios. This is a lot like, no, not adios. Oh, so that's Spanish, adios. adios. I'm not adios. sure if I'm saying it right, but it does, it's spelled. Thank you. I remember this word from going to Brazil because... Thank you. Um, so you always want to learn the word for thank you when you go to a country. So that, oh, there's obrigado. Obrigado. Uh, please is fast favor. Fast favor. Which is what? Yes. Spanish, which is por favor, right? Por favor. But it's fast favor. Yes. yes. It's sim. sim. No, no it's no. now. Now. I don't know. How it's really it's close, but it just has an A in Mandarin. Uh -huh. And this one I love. I was going to get my cup that says good morning in different languages and show it in the video, but I forgot. Is it the brown cup? No, it's the other one. I can get it for you. Okay, go get it. So, because I have a cup that says, a mug that I drink from in the mornings, it says, Goodbye, uh, good morning in different language. Is, and the one that always... Mommy, you see if it has that on it. Well, it does have it on it because it always jumps out at me. I always think about it when I see it and how it's Brazilian. Um, I don't know. I thought Daddy was drinking out of it this morning. Maybe I was wrong. All right. It's okay. Okay, so here's the end. I'm about to switch back over. To us. Uh, if anybody ever wants to get in contact with me, yes. that's the information. Connor, it's okay, buddy. All right, so we're going to switch so that we're on the screen because I wanted to read one more thing about um, Portugal that I thought was really interesting. Hi. All right, so I have this book because we got a bunch of books from the library before before they were closed. Let me see. No, that's not it. It's okay, buddy. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. All right, so I thought, I was reading this book to research today, and I heard this part about naming newborns um, was really interesting to me. So I'm going to read that before we go. In the United States, new parents can name their children anything they like. Even Many me. other countries, including Portugal, have strict rules or laws about what babies can be named. What? Yeah. yeah. And Portugal naming laws require that given names must be traditionally Portuguese names, unless one of the parents is foreign. Even then, the name must use the Portuguese spelling. So, for example, a baby could be named Kevim, but not Kevin. In addition, the gender of the baby must be clear from the name. There are no names like Taylor or Connor, because I know a girl named Connor, or there's other, there's certain names that are what about usually, Bryson? Bryson, I've only known boys named Bryson, but. No, this. Okay, that wouldn't work there because it's not a Portuguese name. Yes. Yeah. Well, neither would Connor. But it says there are no names like Taylor, which are common for both boys and girls. Nor can a child's official name be a nickname or shortened version of a name. So, like, I would have to go by Jennifer. I couldn't say, hi, my name is Jen. I would have to say I'm Jennifer. A newborn can be named Alexandre, say? but not Alex. So, I thought that was a very interesting fact about Portugal. Well, Alexander. 
Yeah, well, they, that's not traditional Portuguese, Alexandre. Okay. Which is different. So, anyway, thanks for joining us. Hope you learned something about Portugal. I know I did. And then in the upcoming week on our, um, in, on social media, we're going to be posting about the trip that, that was not. We're going to put. Can we watch your waves now? Yeah, as soon no, as I hit stop. No, hold on. Actually, we need to play hopscotch too. But. All right, let's put. But we have when we make it. All right, let's just finish up. So we're going to be posting about what we would have done every day of the trip on social media. So follow us there at Explore More Family Travel. Thanks. Bye. Bye.